All right, everybody, diving into a brand new Cabral concept. This episode 3079, we're going to get into seven popular pharmaceuticals and the nutrients they deplete. So one of the questions I get all the time in my practice is that, oh, I need to be on this particular pharmaceutical or drug. Uh, here's why. What can I do to mitigate some of these side effects that it's going to have? So I always like to say to people, and I have to share this, that technically even medical doctors can't give you advice over a podcast. That would be unethical. It's immoral. Doctors are naturopathy, integrative health practitioners. We are not providing medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical cures, medical diagnosis. What our job is, especially in the natural health field, is to be able to share with you what conventional medicine does not. Right. So conventional medicine is very good at looking at blood work, providing you with a diagnosis if you have a high or a low and then prescribing a pharmaceutical. Now, they do that to mask the specific symptoms. We'll be getting one today, like statins. Why is someone put on a statin? Basically, the, if pharmaceutical companies could have their way, the entire world would be put on a statin. Le legitimately, by the time you're, let's say, 30 years old, everybody would go on a statin. And they're trying to. They're just saying, well, if we can drive your cholesterol levels as low as humanly possible, you'll be healthier, less chance for heart attack. Well, they don't tell you all the side effects. You can just look up side effects of statin drugs. Uh, they don't share that. That with you. So our job in natural health is to say, is there a way that we can look at this from an underlying root cause perspective? However, while you're on the pharmaceutical drug, let's then give you the nutrients that the drug's depleting. All right. Because here's the thing. Pharmaceuticals aren't like purposely depleting these nutrients from your body. That's not what they're doing, but they can compete with the nutrients, like the actual vitamins and minerals we'll talk about that your body takes in, or it could actually chelate them, bind up remove them from their body or hurt the absorption, meaning like you don't absorb them as well because they actually compete for that absorption or they remove them through the kidneys uh, and you're into a faster degree or even the liver, right? So let's go through seven of these today. These are really seven very popular ones. So I think they're going to help hopefully the most and the largest amount of people. And then I can obviously share this show when people ask, hey, what should I be doing if I'm taking, you know, metformin, right? People are using metformin now. We'll start with that one, metformin. So metformin is a drug typically used with type 2 diabetes or diabetes to help better regulate blood sugar levels. I'm just going to give you a baseline of what these drugs do because we're not going to get too deep into pharmacology here. So when we look at metformin, we say, yeah, it does what it's supposed to do. Literally, it's going to help you not allow your blood sugar levels to spike too high, okay? So it's going to help better modulate insulin levels, unlock that door to the cells, get that glucose in there, uh, better regulate blood sugar. All right, but what they don't tell you about metformin, because we have all these biohackers out there thinking they're doing a good thing taking metformin, which I definitely don't recommend, um, they are depleting themselves of B vitamins, and that is a real issue. Why? B vitamins are your number one I'll call them stress reliever. They are anti-stress. They also do a lot more in the body by converting carbohydrates in food to energy. And they help specific organs like the adrenals and the thyroid. B1, probably best known for the thyroid. And then everything from B3 to B5 uh, and beyond B12 for the adrenals. But what I also want to add is that if you start to deplete your B9, which is folate, or your B12, or your B6, you can also end up with certain forms of anemia or methylation-based issues, which can cause a lot of inflammation, especially if you're an MTHFR, uh, methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase uh, gene mutation. So if you have it, it's not hard to live with. It's really not at all. Like it's no, there's not a death sentence. A lot of people are getting scared because of all sorts of, you know, people going around saying, oh, if you have this, if you just fix it, you fix everything. It's not the case. Like, yes, you need certain methylated B vitamins, but you know, then, okay. You know, that's, it's not, not anything outrageous. You don't have to worry about that. But here's the thing, metformin can deplete your B vitamin. So what do you need to do? You can take a good daily activated multivitamin or an activated B complex uh, on top of most likely something like your daily uh, nutritional support, something like that. Again, use your favorite brands. I'm going to talk about what we use in our practice today, which is Equalife, but you could use your favorite company. I have no issue with that. You're just looking for a good activated B complex if you're using metformin. Again, I'm not giving any medical advice. It's something I would look into. It's what I would personally do if I was on any of these drugs. That's all I'm sharing with you. Okay. The next one I want to give you is antacids. So we have so many people on, I'll say over the counter, antacids, so pick your favorite brand, or proton pump inhibitors, uh, or others. Here's the issue. 
It's anything that depletes your stomach of stomach acid. That's really all we're talking about. You don't have to, like, we don't have to single out a specific drug. Anything that depletes your stomach of stomach acid. And we'll get to antibiotics in a minute because a lot of people don't know that about antibiotics. But when you're taking an antacid, you are now not going to be able to break down because it needs stomach acid. You're not going to be able to break down and then utilize and absorb calcium, zinc, B12, and potassium to the same degree. That means you can be taking a lot of calcium. You can be showing up with bone-based issues. You can be showing up with um, all sorts of muscle weakness. If you're on an antacid, it's harming your body's ability to use calcium and zinc and potassium and B12 in the body. So it's an issue. So what do we need to do? Well, with a meal, hopefully that you're not taking a stomach acid blocker with, we're going to have to supplement with supplemental calcium. We don't, we don't want to supplement too high in calcium. We want to get a lot of that from our food, but something like a CalMag uh, Complete is going to be great because it's balanced with magnesium, so it helps pull the calcium right out of the bloodstream because you don't want to take calcium just by itself. It can, really, it can harden the arteries. It's not ideal. I mean, they used to recommend that in like the 70s and 80s, but that's old, old advice. If your medical doctor is still telling you just to take calcium to strengthen your bones, it's just old advice. It's bad advice. You want to take calcium and magnesium. Now, you can take more calcium than magnesium. It's not that you can't, but you really want to be taking it with daily nutritional support or a good daily activated multi so that you can use the K2, the vitamin D3, calcium, magnesium, zinc to get that calcium where you actually want it. Okay. So that's on a stomach blocker. Those are the ones that you're going to need. Let's go over birth control next. A lot of, well, I know almost, almost zero, right? Almost no women are told that if they're on birth control, they're going to be depleting their body of vital nutrients that they will one day need right? They'll need it for energy every day, but they will one day need for fertility, right? To get pregnant. So here they are. Basically all of your B vitamins, but specifically B2, B6, which is paradoxal 5-phosphate and B12. So it's a uh, methyl cobalamin and vitamin B9. So it's those methyl based donors. So again, if you have the MTHFR and you're taking birth control, it can lead to all sorts of uh, mental health-based issues, anxiety, depression, sleep issues, energy issues, inflammation, and so much more. All right, what else does it deplete? Zinc, vitamin C, magnesium, and more. Birth control very much detrimentally affects the absorption of nutrients in your body. So uh, whenever you take birth control, whether you take it every night or every morning, at an opposite meal, you're going to take daily nutritional support, and then you're probably going to take an extra activated B-complex at lunch, right? So the daily activated multi, and then maybe one extra, uh, or the daily nutritional support. Basically, daily nutritional support is an activated multivitamin, uh, but it also has 15 grams of uh, plant-based protein in it. At the same time, again, use your favorite company if uh, you are not uh, able to use or want to use equal life based products, which is what we use in our practice. Okay, so typically it would be two scoops of daily nutritional support at breakfast and then an activated B complex at lunch. Uh, and if you need to, because you're still low in energy, poor mood, et cetera, one at dinner. All right, so hopefully that's helpful. You can always add a little extra vitamin C and then a balanced zinc with dinner. All right, all right, what else do I wanna go over next? Tylenol. Tylenol obviously over-the-counter, very popular. It's acetaminophen. It doesn't have to be brand name Tylenol. I'm not coming down just on Tylenol, right? So really important, it depletes glutathione. I did a podcast. I think it was actually, I don't know if it was a full show or just a Friday review, but we'll link it up here today at stephencabral.com slash 3079. And I actually went over acetaminophen intake while pregnant and the correlation Literally dose-dependent correlation to ADD, ADHD, autism, and more. Some people were just saying, like, thank you for sharing this. My doctor's never said that. This is supposed to be okay for you to take while pregnant. And some people were mad would say, like, well, what am I supposed to do when I'm in pain? Listen, I get it. I get it. I understand. But not knowing and also having that, that information shared with you is empowering. There are other things that you can do, and it's important because it does deplete your glutathione. It's extremely important, right? So especially if you're going for some medical intervention or shot or whatever at your doctor's office, you don't want to be taking Tylenol before it or for the next few days after. And that's because it depletes your body's glutathione. And glutathione is what allows you to eliminate toxins from the body. 
right? So really important. Glutathione is the what they call the uh, master antioxidant or detoxifier of the body. It's basically just a huge part of phase two detoxification to get these fat-soluble toxins become water-soluble toxins, and you're able to harmlessly then eliminate them through your stool or urine. But if it isn't all working, you know, it becomes a real inflammation zone inside of the body. I have a free course on that. It's at stephencabral.com slash courses. Just click on the detox course. It's completely free. You can understand how your body detoxifies. It's one of the most important things that you could learn. Okay. Next up, let's go over statins. Okay. Statins, statins don't, the big thing they're known as for depleting coenzyme Q10. No doubt about it. Why is that? Okay. I could take you through the biochemistry, which is actually extremely fascinating. It really is. But what I want to share with you is this, is that coenzyme Q10 is needed by the mitochondria in your body. So let's just say there's a thousand mitochondria per typical cell. It's, it can be, it can vary wildly, but your heart can have five times as much. It can have 5,000 mitochondria basically per cell. So when you look at that and you are weakening the mitochondria, the heart becomes weaker. So when you take statins, you're trying to prevent cholesterol buildup and plaque buildup and all these different things, but your doctor will never talk, tell you, but you can look up, just look up cardiomyopathy from statins or statin induced cardio, or cardiac myopathy. You'll have the information is out there. So you're taking a statin drug so that you don't end up with cardiovascular issues, cardiovascular disease, but yet you may die from a weak heart because you're depleting the mitochondria in the cardiac tissue, the cardiac muscle, which is your heart. So if you're on a statin, first, again, look for the underlying root cause. Look for the underlying root cause of type 2 diabetes. Look for the underlying root cause of um, stomach acid issues. Look for the underlying root cause of why you're taking Tylenol, right? Or acetaminophen for pain. Birth control is a different story. You're taking birth control because most likely um, you're trying not to get pregnant, but someone would take birth control to try to regulate their hormones. Okay, we can figure that out. We can figure out the underlying root cause as to why you might be estrogen dominant, which is the most common. All right. And then also, well, why do you have unhealthy levels of uh, cholesterol? We can look at that too. All right. But if not, taking CoQ10, uh, specifically coenzyme Q10 is great by itself. It really is. But even a better form, if you're on a statin, would be ubiquinol. And you're going to take 100 to 200 milligrams per day. Again, I can't give you that as medical advice, uh, but it's what I would do myself if I was on a statin. All right, let's go through two more. Antibiotics is the next one. So antibiotics, oftentimes in life, unfortunately, people have to take antibiotics. As I've said before, for me, it's a life-saving only condition would be needed for me to take antibiotics. I've been taking antibiotics since 27 years old. Uh, that was when I basically turned my back on conventional medicine. Uh, and now I use, again, cutting edge things like full body MRIs for cancer-based detection. I run my annual blood work. So it's not like I don't do those things. I just, I'm not part of the system. I'm not part of the pill for every ill. I'm just, I don't do that, right? I don't do that for myself or anyone in my practice. It's just not how we operate. But if you have surgery and you have to have surgery, Oftentimes, and usually you have to take antibiotics. So you don't end up with a bacterial infection that could, that could take your life, right? So I get it. So what do we do, right? Well, the issue is it can really destroy the gut microbiome from taking antibiotics. It can also disrupt your skin microbiome. So there's a lot that goes into this. So typically what we do, if it's short term, we're going to be using clean gut probiotic and healthy gut support for anywhere from four to 12 weeks while you're taking the antibiotics and then after. And so the Clingup probiotic has Saccharomyces boulardii in it, the number one thing that you can do to prevent yeast overgrowth, because remember, you're taking an antibiotic which kills bacteria, but it doesn't kill yeast. So as you're killing bacteria, yeast begins to overgrow. That's, that was a huge thing that happened to me, unfortunately, from 14 to 17 years old. It's one of the reasons I got so sick. I had massive candied overgrowth from taking two antibiotics every single day for over three years from a dermatologist, right? So disastrous. If you know my story, it didn't end well. Luckily, uh, I found the right mentor, took 10 years, but I learned a lot over that course, uh, got my health back, overcame multiple diseases that conventional medicine said I would never overcome, and uh, obviously lived to tell about it. Now, my job is to try to do my best to, to help others not suffer from what I suffered from, or at least for as long. All right, so 
clean gut probiotic, healthy gut support to heal and seal that gut wall. And then if needed, the CBO protocol to uh, help to rebalance the bacteria and yeast in the intestines. All right, the last one is steroids. So corticosteroids, I'm probably going to do a whole show just on topical steroid withdrawal. Uh, it is debilitating. Uh, it's 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 awful. I don't want to get into it on this podcast. I've helped multiple clients now overcome it. It's terrible. It's terrible. It just is because of the mental health aspects related with it. And I'm not going to go into that on the show, uh, but I do want to help people in. So even if it's a small fraction of our audience, I want to be able to help those people. So I will. I just need to put together a thoughtful show on how, because it's very complex, how we can help from A to Z. And that's obviously all going to be free. So it's just, here's how to do it because I try to open source everything that I know that works in our practice and around the world. And we've worked now with well over a quarter million people and have uh, run well over a half a million labs. So quite, quite a bit of data. All right. But if someone's on corticosteroids, steroids of any type, um, we're talking about catabolic steroids, not anabolic steroids. What we're looking at is a depletion in the body of calcium, magnesium, and potassium. This is extremely important because it's depleting your electrolytes. Okay. There is a reason why it does not say sodium because your body is shifted into fight or flight. This is extremely important because you are rearing your HPA axis, your adrenals, and that can detrimentally affect kidneys. It can affect your thyroid. It can affect your digestion and so much more, right? So corticosteroids are a Last resort, it's just what you need to do in order for you to be able to balance whatever inflammation is going on in your body, but they massively deplete the body of electrolytes because of the stress that is created in your body. And that aldosterone is what keeps the sodium a little bit high, at least temporarily. And then it massively depletes your B vitamins, glutamine, and more. So the goal is if you have to be on corticosteroids, that you are fortifying your body with more micronutrients and you are not overdoing exercise or overdoing any of the stressors because it is a massive stress in the body. So, you know, I can't, I can't, I'm not gonna give you a whole supplement protocol as to what to do to this, but bottom line, minimum daily nutritional support plus activated B complex, then you're gonna be taking most likely, let's just say, uh, something like an alkalizing vitamin C, which buffers a lot of the stress with the vitamin C and oxidative stress, but it contains the calcium, magnesium, potassium in that for electrolytes, um, and then adding just a little probably a little squeeze of lemon or lime to your water, just gets a little bit more potassium in there for good salts. And you'll most likely be using um, adrenal soothe and full spectrum magnesium or so, at least with dinner. So this is a, a good starting point, And it's hopefully a show that begins to open your eyes that there is no medication out there that's completely safe, that doesn't deplete your body of what it naturally needs. Therefore, when you take medications, it's going to cause, and, and pharmaceuticals, it's going to cause other health issues in the future as these depletions begin to take place. So again, hopefully this was helpful. There's a podcast on everything at stephencabral.com slash podcast. There's over 3,000 shows. Uh, you can search all the shows right there. For today's show, all the takeaways, all the notes, head on over to stephencabral.com slash 3079. Please share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.